Hello, here is a drawing video related to perspective drawing. I'm going to be talking about a couple different things. In particular, I'm going to sort of focus in on some vertical planes that will be part of... Um, in this scenario, I'm going to be talking about more likely something like a big building that you're looking at outside, but is also applicable to any box type thing. Um, so I'm going to be uh, doing some of that. I uh, will be demonstrating my, uh, like I said, my patent pending um, larger dot points to smaller points to hopefully help create a sense of depth. And then I'm going to start combining those two planes and and still using that idea and trying to indicate which edge is the closest, which is the next closest, and which is the furthest with um, with these perspective lines as well as the dots. So first thing just be to to do a couple of the uh, just the vertical planes. And I would go ahead and just start off with a couple guides. And then horizontal guides, I should say. And then so the lower the lower one I'm keeping on the same level. And I'm lowering one of the uh, one of the top points. So these points right now are sort of both reading the same dot size, so kind of the same. It's not really helping. So I could either um, get out my eraser, which I'm not going to do, and make that one smaller. But I think I'm going to make this one bigger. So those are bigger. I might even beef that line up a little bit. And I'm going to think about this angle, this line, this edge that's connecting these two, oh, I could think of them with sticks, sticks with ping pong balls on them. And they are the same height, but because of perspective and because we're viewing this um, at a spot where our eye level is is down here at the bottom of what we're looking at. This one is further away, even though this is a straight line. It's a good thing to practice going, huh? Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to just jot in where I think sort of the midpoints are of those two verticals and sketch in what seems like an angled line that's in between that horizontal and that angled line. And is I can sort of go back and forth and think about it as being midway, sort of in, in the middle height. Let's uh, let's try another one. Different uh, different scenario. So I have, like, once again, I have the bigger points or the closer ones. These are further. I can sort of jot or, you know, just try to 
put a mark where an estimated midpoint is. But I also, like I talked about in class, encourage you to think about just sketching this horizontal, that angle, and then thinking about about halfway in between and, like I said, sort of an averaged out angle. So this angle is between that steeper one, that steeper one, and this horizontal one. Let's do that a little bit more. can't decide on a pencil grip for this evening. Maybe I'll stick with this one. So once again, I'm sort of thinking about this angle and referencing that to this this horizontal right here and thinking okay what is how how much difference is there between that horizontal reference context guide and this angle of a line that's going away from edge that's going away from me So once I've done that, I um, I would do that a bunch more just to, and keep kind of just sketching in ideas that might help it read that much more as an object that's closer to me and something that's further away. And um, the other thing I said. I mentioned, suggested, was to, uh, once I've sort of sketched in that little angle and mid midway, halfway up, to try that again. Between those. And once again, I could I could, and it would be good practice if you haven't done it at all, to um, just keep finding midpoints, and those those will line up. Appropriately. And if you have done that a little bit more and you're feeling more confident, just sort of practice kind of sketching in that line that would sort of split that shape into an upper and lower, but it's going to be, there's going to be an angle to it. So and all of these, as you can see, are, are still averaging out with with the with the rest of them I'm not that wasn't quite correct but anyways this is horizontal that's a little bit angled that's a little bit more a little bit more and then that's the most angled so it's kind of practicing both getting 
sort of this uh, a similar height, you know, splitting, dividing this up, and uh, so it's kind of these even, evenly spaced lines, but they're still they're angled and they're not exactly evenly spaced. So practice that a bunch, and I'm going to. Get a fresh piece of paper and do a couple just combining these two uh, vertical planes in a way that uh, would emulate drawing several things, but mostly I think of it as drawing. A building, a large building, where you're you're sitting at ground level and and looking up. So this line here is the horizon line. I'm going to do a similar thing, and then I'm going to give myself kind of a reference of what is side to side up here. I have side to side down here. I want to know it here as well. I've sketched in up and down, so I'm pretty sure of that. I'm going to, um, for one of these planes, I want to make this line going back um, somewhat steep and somewhat I'll show you in a second. Th this to here I want a little bit shorter than than the other one. This one I'm going to have a little bit less steep of an angle right here. Sketch my edge there. So I'm thinking about a few things. I'm thinking about several things. I'm thinking about that angle being steeper than this angle. I'm thinking about this edge being the closest edge, the leading edge, often called. This is the next sort of closest to me, the viewer. At least I'm, I'm saying that in this particular situation. And this is going to read as the furthest. And that is reinforcing this angle as being steeper as well. And this is ground level. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing here for the the um, angle guides, perspective lines. I'm going to do it on both now, though. Once again, I could spend a little bit of time and make sure that I'm doing all these, making all these points both midway and then midway again, midway, midway again, midway, midway again. Adjust that one a little bit. And that's good for now. Well, let's do um, some uh, some other scenarios, but I'm still going to use the same sort of technique. I'm sketching a ground that is also going to be all of these for this entire video. Video the uh, horizon line is is on the bottom here. So let's see, maybe. Um, Let 
Maybe one that is uh, not as wide, but maybe some even more dramatic angles. I try to um, balance the intensity of the angles such that if one of them is really steep, the other is going to be very gradual. Oh, I wasn't going to make it quite as wide. I'm finish that thought. If one is really steep, the other is going to be really gradual. And if one is a little bit steep, then there's a there's a there's an a uh, opposite angling effect. I'll try to explain that better in, <laughs> at some point. But let's see. I'm making these points. I want those a little bit further than these because this is the closest edge because this is so subtle of an angle I, I know that this is not that much further in distance but this is a dramatic angle so I know it's quite a bit smaller back here it appears a lot smaller so let me see I'll do um, my half sketching lines and that this is where it can get pretty tricky because uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between this horizontal and this um, slightly angled line so there's less less variety and it's just a uh, it's a good thing to um, practice doing these and that will train your eye and once again jot in these points to help. This one's going to be quite a bit different but it's still still following the same uh, point connections. And that it's midway and then midway again. Maybe I should be saying bisect. The um, what I was trying to get at with this uh, difference, oftentimes. Um, I'm just going to try to sketch this idea, but it will be if if one of them, one of these planes that's going away to the left is very gradual, it's more likely that the one going away to the right will be steeper. And if they're about the same, they'll both be kind of at the same little more gradual angle and I want to make sure that's actually making sense and by the time uh, it would be um, oriented like this to the viewer it would be something like that and sort of everything in between but hopefully that's kind of queer in that it helps to think about both these angles individually as well as how they um, 
how they combine. In other words, it's pretty rare that you're going to have a building where you're looking at a scenario where both planes, both of the top edges of these planes are dramatically one way or only the other, so it's possible, but um, more often it's going to be something along these lines. So I would say practice a bunch of those. Set up little scenarios. This is going to set us up for um, drawing our, our beach huts. And um, that's going to be fun to do. I'll be talking about other more, more more aspects of understanding this whole thing including understanding these angles and how they relate to what's called the vanishing point. Um, unfortunately the vanishing point is often something that's both hard to draw on your piece of paper and it's hard just to really kind of see where it is when in whatever you're looking at to draw. So there's there's a couple things, um, including these sorts of lines, to help help get around that. But um, that's it for now. I'll do roofs too. Okay, have fun.